Dendrobium polyanthum is a gorgeous medium-sized orchid that is a winter rester and has the most gorgeous, precious, sparkly white blooms that smell of sweet licorice. Delicious. Why would we not want to try and propagate some of the canes that are deteriorating at the base? The fact that I'm seeing canes deteriorating at the base means there's an issue at the base. I want to counteract that. But in the meantime, let's see if we can't propagate something, get some cakeys out of this gorgeous orchid. The only thing also as well is I have some roots in the back that I don't want to crush. So I have to fandangle, maneuver something around. We'll have to figure it out. I hope you'll stick around. Let's try and propagate this gorgeous orchid by means of using canes and see if we can't get some cakeys out of them. So my polyanthem is a winter rester. I do give it some water during the winter months. It's the first time that I've seen canes deteriorate at the base while still being nice and green right around the end here. This is a normal deteriorating cane. It starts at the end to get all desiccated and it works its way up. That is normal. This in here, you can see that right there. That is not a normal deterioration of a cane. But I have enough cane left. I hope that we have some substance in there that we can propagate. And I have another one right here as well. They seem to be coming out of the same area. So eventually, not now, but eventually what I want to do is get rid of the moss around the base. Now this could have happened because of heavy handed watering, which I didn't think was heavy handed at the time, but clearly something's not quite right down here. That could be because the moss was around there too long and the days, including the nights, were too cold. So my dry climate didn't really help in drying things out and I misjudged the watering. Now the orchid is strong enough. It's not like she's going to deteriorate because two canes are going bad at the center, but it is certainly an interesting observation that I would like to, you know, have a little bit of a reminder of coming the next winter months just not to be so eager to keep it watered you know providing water that my resting dendrobiums never ever go without water during the winter mm, this one being medium sized maybe i was a little bit too generous this winter so i'm not concerned but teachable moment huh we can at least work with what we've got and see if we can't propagate using the canes. So anyway, let's do that. And also if I can tidy up the orchid, I mean, it is so tempting to go in and remove the yellowing canes here. This is a normal decline right here. And here is one that is completely gone right in here. So I could cut this one out. I hope you can see this. There's a lot going on in this orchid, <laughs> which is good. So this is a normal declined cane. Let me cut that one out. That can go. The ones that are only just yellow, I don't want to remove those because the orchid is absorbing that energy. But the ones that are completely desiccated, like this one here, let me get it and I'll show you. That can go. It's done its job and we can thank it for its service. So there's like two or three of them in there, you see? Completely spent. It's been around for quite some time. So let me get the other one out, not this one. We'll get that just now. There was another desiccated one. Here, here is a desiccated one just at the tip, but the rest of it is green, so I'm not removing that. Was that the only one? I thought I saw another one, or am I being deceived? There it goes. There it is. There we go. Perfect. For any dendrobium that is a winter rester, I highly recommend that you completely wait until everything is dried out, until it really looks desiccated. There's nothing left. The orchid is clearly still using it. So we're going to get our propagating canes out.
and we'll work with those. And let's see if maybe I can't pass some on to someone else, if this does work. You see, it's a bit yellowing here in comparison to healthy. So we'll have to, well, gauge that. But there's green over here. And this one looks pretty good. So let's go to the staging area and have a look-see. We don't want to waste the potential of possibly getting cakeys. While I was fussing around a little bit with the moss, I just want to show you that it is a happy cakey producer. And you can see this cakey right here. Look at the base. It's got roots. But look at the base. It's all desiccated. Now that is surprising. I'm not concerned for the orchid. I just wanted to show you what's going on back here. And I haven't made up my mind whether I should cut this off and try to propagate it or just leave it and observe it. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. This orchid came to me in relatively good shape. I bought it on eBay. The canes aren't as strong as you would think. They are more soft. They're softer than nobly. They have a succulent feel to them. So I'm just kind of wondering if this whole bit back here is having issues suddenly out of nowhere to my eye anyway out of nowhere <laughs> it's like it's hanging on by the roots that are in and around the mount so i'll just leave it and watch it there are plenty healthy bits of the orchid up here it's not like it's going to be a threat to the orchid okay let's go and try and get ourselves some keikis this is how i do it Alrighty, now here in the sun, they look much more yellower than they really are. I've got more green to work with than what it looks like right here, because that is important. What I don't like is the fact that I have this deteriorating, desiccating end bit. So I'm going to hope you can see the contrast here. There's green here. There's yellow there. You can see that, I hope. So I'm going to take it down to the part where the green meets the yellow. Don't want to cut away too much because I want to leave myself still enough to work with if the ends deteriorate down. They can always desiccate even more, but just above a node. So hopefully the node will stop the further decline of this tissue because this is the storage organ that the keikis should be able to use until they're mature enough to grow roots and be taken off. Just using a little bit of cinnamon to dry out the wound. And then the other end, because it's already dried out, all of that, there is no yellowing here whatsoever. I'm not going to cut into the tissue. I'm just gonna cut off the dried bits so that it can fit into my little container of a little bit of sphagnum moss. Right now, I don't want the cinnamon to be touching that moss. And then we'll cover it up with some cling film to keep the humidity high. So this looks very yellow on camera. It's not that bad. It looks much more greener down there. I don't see that this will desiccate. And if it does, oh well, so be it. Not much to do here. Just trim that for the sake of aesthetics. My sphagnum moss is only lightly wet and it shouldn't really need to be wet again while this is going on, especially if I cover things up. I'll just make sure my cut end is not touching anything wet. Or you can just leave one on top of the other. And here we have another example. Oh, all these nodes, let's hope, let's hope. We've got the desiccating dry bit here, and it looks like it's continuing. 
Yeah, we've got green there. We have a node here. We're going to cut up above the node that looks the healthiest next to the yellow where it's clearly going to dry out. A bit of cinnamon. Comme ça. Now, if you're in a very, very humid climate, you won't be needing to put cellophane on your canes. The only thing you would need to do is make sure that the sphagnum moss doesn't dry out. And of course, make sure that all your cutting tools are sterilized, which I did prior to filming. So let's get our cling film here. Because I'm not going to put aeration holes over the top, which is something you can do if you're going to close it up completely. Poke aeration holes into the cling film. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make my aeration access a little gap in between. Like that. So what you want to do after all that is put them into good light, not direct sun, but the brightest shade that you can provide with great ventilation. And then hopefully some of the nodes will activate and swell. And hopefully then we can get ourselves some Dendrobium polyanthum cakeys to give away to anybody that is here in Europe. Fingers crossed that this works. This is how I did it in the past. I had a Dendrobium tangerinum and I propagated her. And unfortunately, before I could harvest the cakeys that formed out of those canes, a puppy thought this is a great chew toy. And that was it for my Dendrobium tangerinum cakeys. What a shame. But anyway, let's hope that it's not a repeat for my polyanthems. Maybe you've seen this done before. Maybe this is nothing new to you. I appreciate that you watched the video anyway. And if you've never seen this done before and it is new to you, then I'm glad that you clicked on the video and I hope that it was useful. Either way, give this video a like. I would so appreciate it. It really does help the channel. And subscribe if you haven't already done so. In the meantime, though, the first cakey project of 2023. <laughs> Have yourself a beautiful day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.